So I told you in the ending, if you watch that whole video, you rock. My dad, so when I went over to my dad's house to get my gifts, I just noticed this time he had a lot of stuff in um, like the basement. There were just things there that I don't remember being there because our beds were gone. So I think we slept downstairs on the, um, on the couch. But a lot of his stuff was gone. A lot of our stuff was gone. The basketball court was gone. Our beds were gone. But we still were allowed there. You know, the cat was there. And I, I didn't see the cat for like five, six months. So there were things during the Christmas. There were just things that were there that didn't look like things my dad would um would have a use for. And I just asked him like that. Like I saw, I remember it was like this. You know the M&M's, the little mascot for M&M's? I remember it was like a, like a little blow up balloon doll. And I just asked him like that, is this yours? And he just said, yeah. And he just, he kind of just pushed, he kind of just um got off the topic of that. So um, we're going into 2004 during um, my ninth birthday because I told you how my mom, like I said, there was, there was difficulties financially with just my mom trying to raise us. There were times when I'm not like throwing her under the bus, but we we didn't have like cable when she couldn't like pay the bill. Cause like I said, it's not easy raising two kids when you, um, when you have like a certain income level that doesn't exceed like raising two kids. Like it, when it doesn't exceed past, I don't know, maybe 40,000, it's hard raising two kids, like putting food on the table, making sure they got, you know, fresh clothes and all that stuff. So my dad wasn't on child support. My mom just required him to pay for our tuition. But um, shows that were beginning to, I be, that I love that year were like Drake and Josh. So I didn't see the premiere of Drake and Josh because I didn't have cable. We didn't we didn't have cable. So our um our PlayStation 2 was like our cable because we didn't have um we didn't have cable. We all if we watched um if we watched TV, if we got tired of playing our game, we would just look at the basic channels like um three, five, six 12, like y'all know, like different regions uh, have different um, names for like channels. But where I'm from, it's Fox 29, UPN 57, CBS 3, 6, uh, 6 ABC, NBC 10 News. So whatever was on UPN, like King of Queens, I had to get used to watching those kind of shows and I didn't like it because it was different with um with all like the the lines in the TV. It wasn't clear. It was really different. Now I wouldn't have a problem watching TV like that. But that's how um TV is when you don't have cable. So you know we went we went um a few times without cable. And, you know, we would just resort to playing card games, playing PlayStation. We just, we were like best friends at the time, man. And there was no cat. So, um, cause they didn't allow cats in our apartment building. I don't know if we, if, if they allowed pets. Well, not that they didn't allow pets. I think it was more money if you had a pet, but if they, if we could have, had like more pets if we could have brung our cat maybe that would have made things a little better i don't know but when i told you how my dad had things that i noticed that didn't look like they belonged to him i go back to his house this time with the playstation and um he has a surprise for us so i'm nine it's my ninth birthday weekend and my brother his 10 he's going on 11 he tells us that um i have something for you guys to know i have somebody staying at our house and i'm at nine i don't really think much of it he he tells us that um i have someone 
I'm not going to say her name. But um, the woman that he's with now, that's who I, I meet for the first time. And I meet her daughter. And that is the beginning of, I guess you can call, uncomfortable living. So when we first meet her, this is 2004. Um, so for my birthday, I received Grand Theft Auto Vice City. That was a game I got for my ninth birthday. That was the second game for our, our PS2. And over time, we get more games that I forget. Um, cause, cause like I said, back in the day, we went to EB Games, GameStop, wherever we could to buy games. So they, we, we, we stockpiled on games over time. But that, I remember that was my second game I received. And, um, I didn't play the missions. The only thing I really did was just, I just ran people over and I like, killed people in those, in that game. I never really knew how to play missions like my brother did. But we, um, we live with them. And around this time, my food sensitivity is beginning to kick in. I'm not able to eat pancakes now. I'm not able to eat certain foods because they were really different. They put cereal in the refrigerator. They, um, she was a real control freak. Something I wasn't used to because my dad my dad um when i tried to drink orange juice during the daytime he was like no orange juice for the morning time you could tell he she kind of pussy with my father a little bit because there were there were things that he was not doing when my mom was with him it was just it was a real adjustment man um around yeah like i said around this time this is a little hard to talk about but um i'm gonna talk about it anyway so she took our room, the room that we, that my dad, my dad gave her that room and he was also giving her my stuff. So I had like a blanket. It was a hundred Dalmatians blanket that I had. He gave that to her. And I noticed that she's using my stuff in my old room. And I'm, I have a problem with that. The fact that like you're giving my stuff away to her and that's not even like I'm your son. And um, these are like conversations that we can't have now, but we have a fight over the fact that she has my stuff. Like all my stuff is given to her. And looking back, just how my I told you my brother had like ill will towards me and I understand it. My half brother. He had ill will towards me. Exactly what he did to the, my half brother, he did to us this time. He didn't have, but he didn't. He didn't produce a child. He just started another family. But he um. He did it in a way where he didn't tell us about it. So we were basically replaced by somebody else. And let me just say this: um, I know I got different subscribers on here, but this is why. I don't like when I hear people who have kids, they want to maybe remarry or they want to date somebody. I, I just personally feel if you want your child not to end up like me, don't raise your kids around different men or different women because they're going to resent you more. They're going to rebel against you more. They're not going to accept that person you have in your life. If you want your kids to end up like me, don't raise if you don't want them to end up like me, don't raise your kids around people that you're you, you're dating because that can put a really bad strain on your relationship with your child. But we, I get into my first fight with a female. Other than my brother, I get into a fight with her over the blanket. My dad takes her side because he's fucking her mom. He wants things to look good. He wants to stay on good terms with her. So um, things didn't really weren't really looking good like the first um, time I met them. And it was tension over the blanket. Now, this person that I'm mentioning, I uh, I haven't seen her going on eight years now. I don't plan on seeing her. I never got along with her at all. Um, my dad, this is why I don't, 
I'm just going to say it in the video. So I cut contact with him November. He he contacted me out of the blue over something that happened to my brother. He wanted to break the ice. I didn't want to answer the call, but I didn't want that feeling of no, like something he had to say, like interfering with me working. I didn't want to be thinking about it at work. But I just understood the person that he is. I don't want nothing to do with him at this point in my life ever. Well, excuse me. I don't want nothing to do with him at all as a person. So anything that's bothering me now. So I don't have it. Like, like bother me where it's affecting my work. It's affecting me coping, like just functioning in life. I, um. I just don't talk to him at all. And I'm confident in just taking things to the grave. As in, when he dies, I, I'm, I'll i feel better knowing I don't got to deal with the fact that he's alive anymore. And I, I really mean that. I don't, I don't have any, I won't shed a tear when he dies because I cried. I shed those tears years ago. I got that pain out years ago. That's how much of a person, that's how much I don't care for him as a person. As in, a lot of the pain that I had came from being under his watch, being around his family, being around his girlfriend's family. That came from him. And knowing the source of my pain, I'll feel better when he's dead, when he's under the ground. I can, I can, I can finally move on. I can physically move on from that, from then on. But I don't have any interest in talking to him, building a relationship with him. And it's hard to not think about him when 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 I'm reminded so much of just past trauma. Because I, like I said, all my past trauma has been a result of his parenting or being associated with him, his family or his girlfriend's family. A lot of my trauma comes from that. Now, my mom is not necessarily... Um, I'm not saying everything was perfect with her because there are times when I have, I do hold a little grudges against my mom. Well, some of the things she's done too, but I applaud her more for not having another man live with us and something could have happened to me. Like I could have been, if she had, she wouldn't have had another man live in the house just thinking about it. But let's say she got desperate where she couldn't really support both of us and she needed like somebody else helping us. Imagine another man living under our house. You know, he could have molested me and my brother. He could have done something to us. He could have hurt us. He could have had children. They could have did something to me. So I applaud her more for not having that around us. But I um I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it in this video. It was like I said, there were times we, we never I never got along with her. She would say things like you don't live here no more. This is when I noticed that it was it was I wasn't like the same as other people. You know, she would say how I needed help and how I was stupid, how I was crazy. I never got along with her at all. And I questioned my dad's loyalty. Like, why would you have this kind of person in my house living them living? living in my house and like I said he always took their side because he wanted to stay on good terms with her mom and that's that's when I questioned his loyalty as a father like is your kids more important than somebody that you're screwing obviously she meant more than I did and this is um this is when I'm just not really, um, I'm not really comfortable going around there, honestly. Because I didn't like, I didn't have a problem with, with his girlfriend at the time. It was really her daughter I didn't like. We were always arguing, we were always fighting. My brother got along. But I just looked back, looking back, it's very selfish. I know some of my subscribers may hear this, but I, I'm just going to say it. I find it very selfish just based on how I turned out, if you have a child or kids, 
and you date somebody and you want your child your children around that i find that very selfish if you have children that's just my opinion but um because look at how i turned out look just looking looking all the trauma all the mental illness depression i got it comes from just that i'm telling you it comes it comes from my childhood experiences see my dad doesn't want to talk about this stuff and he said it himself he knows that he fucked up as a parent a lot of the stuff he did but he doesn't want to acknowledge that very much because it brings guilt into him he won't admit it but i but this is what i say he's going to answer for that one day just how i'm going to be i want to be um I got an answer to the stuff that I did that's wrong. He's going to have to answer for all the things that he's done on this earth. But, um, I have a brother, the half brother, um, who lives in Ohio. He comes by sometimes. Our relationship is, um, not as close as it once was since my mom is not in the picture. We don't really get along like that. We weren't like really, really cool. I'm beginning to not really care for his family because when my mom got out, was not in the picture. We, I was not, I, I just found, I just saw his family in a different light. His sister, my aunt, she was uh, a little bit of a, um, she was, a, she, I'm going to use some Philly slang. So drawling is a Philly word. It's like equivalent when New York, New Yorkers say wilding, we say drawling. Cause I don't, like I said, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, um, back. I'm, I'm reading again, guys. So I'm not using, um, like big, big words, but my aunt liked to draw as in drawing. Draw is, is the, um, is also a verb. It's the same as drawing, but my aunt liked to draw. I had another aunt who had two kids that were my cousins. She really wasn't in my life like that. But it was really just his family and her side of the family. Now, his girlfriend's family, I this is when I began to explore that there are black people who are not of really high class because this is when I discover, see, me and my brother, we were never like hood. We weren't hood. We weren't from the streets. We lived in a pretty nice environment. So we weren't like, we weren't hood. Our neighbors weren't hood. But her family was very ghetto. Looking back, they were very ghetto. They were a ghetto ass family. So things that they did were just so foreign to me. Like they cursed so freely. They they listened to music that I... um. That was very, that was very laced with profanity. I didn't get along with um, really none of her, her, like the cousins that the nephews that she had, I didn't get along with um, a lot of them because I was weird to some of them. But um, my dad would, he sent us over their house. So she had a nephew. She had a brother and they had kids. We went over their house for some for uh for like some kind of event. I don't know what it was. It was like a party. And um I I didn't really fit in very much with them. But long story short, my dad got his girlfriend to drive us home. I don't remember us having a car. I don't know how we got home. Maybe the, maybe the Pontiac, because I remember the Pontiac breaking down, but she drove us home and my mom made a big deal out of, um, her knowing where we live. He, she went off on my dad on the phone and this is, um, the beginning of 04. So I told you food sensitivity was beginning to kick in. Oh yeah. Um, I wasn't really i felt sensitivities to like milk now and my cat who was my, once my best friend every time i would come upstairs he would like like jump on me he would kind of attack me as i would come upstairs 
Uh, maybe because he felt like I abandoned him. I don't know, but um, he he would attack me now, and um, that eventually stopped. But the neighborhood was so different. Like I said, um, all of our friends that lived on the block that we were cool with, they were gone. Poppy, the Hispanic family, they were gone. His family, his relatives that we hang out with, they were gone. And I would sporadically go back and forth. I would like, I would alter from my dad's house to my mom's house. So sometimes I would, I would definitely be there on the weekends, but I would mostly stay at um, my mom's house. But weekends were like my dad's and um, just thinking about school now. I wasn't a really, I was, it was pretty obvious now I wasn't a good student because I was, I was getting like bad grades because I didn't understand the concept of school. I didn't understand how to read a book. All I would really do is recite what I would hear, but I was not applying anything I learned to my life because I didn't know how my brain worked. I didn't know that light should be off when I read or what I should, because I wasn't eating I was not eating breakfast because food made me go to the bathroom and it would, and I never went to the bathroom. Like I never took a shit at school because I was embarrassed. So um, I never wanted to eat when I was at school. I would hold that in a whole day. So I don't know what kind of effect that would have on me, but I didn't eat breakfast. All I would eat was basically lunch. And I, and I had no problem starving myself the whole day. It was nothing to me. <laughs> So, um, no breakfast, just lunch. And whatever I ate, would eat during, um, for dinner, that was my food. So I ate two meals a day. Didn't understand the concept of, of, of homework, anything. So I wasn't, um, I wasn't like want to repeat the grade, but I was not, I was not a good student at all. And sometimes my mom, she would, um, one time she got me, she literally like, she grabbed me out of bed and she would hit me cause I wasn't doing good in school. And it's like, I don't know what it was. I could have did any better cause nobody was really teaching me anything, but I will say it. My mom would hit me sometimes like during, um, this was even during, um, during like when I when they were together, she would put her hands on me like during homework and like during like um <sighs> during like mat like during homework sessions or like study sessions. If I got something wrong, she would like hit me. And this is what I'm talking about when I say this is how I why I turned out the way I do. Cause like when I think about this kind of stuff, it's wrong now. Some of the stuff that she did, some things that my dad did. It's fucked up. And this is why this is the result of how I turned out. This is why I, I feel the way about black women. This is the way I feel about black people. This is why I, I feel the way I do about just people. And I, I do hold grudges between them. Now, I will. And I'll, I'll text my mom, you know, sporadically. But I told you, I'm a grown ass man. I don't need nobody to wipe my ass for me. So I won't feel no kind of way if. I just don't talk to her for a week or two. Like it was, it was, uh, recently I, I got in, I didn't, I don't, I, I didn't talk to her for like a whole week, but I don't, but it doesn't, it doesn't get under my skin because like I said, I do everything for me, but sometimes when I don't talk to her, it's based off of just childhood trauma, things that she did to me. And it's, it's more, cause I'm not, like I said, it's, the, it's a lot of things my mom did to me, but I can, I hold her to a little high of a higher. Um, I praise her more because she didn't have somebody living under, like living with us where something fucked up could have happened. Like I said, I could have got molested. I could have got raped. I could have been abused. If that person had kids, they could have did something to me. But um, I wasn't a good student. I didn't apply none of the stuff I learned to life. And I thought I was going to repeat the third grade, to be honest. But also around this time, um, 
Because I didn't, I, did, I, I did not really, I wasn't getting bullied. But I hung out with, like, the nerds. Like, the kids that were obsessed with, like, drawing. I hung out with those kids. But I wasn't really, like, a gifted artist myself. But I was really obsessed with learning how to draw. Because this kid, Anthony, he would, like, draw comics a lot. And I was, I was obsessed with trying to learn how to, like, draw like him. But I hung out with a lot of the kids that were, like, the, um the nerds like the comic book kids i hung out with them in after school but at the same time i was like i was obsessed with wrestling and i was always trying to practice wrestling on like somebody weaker than me so i was a little violent but um that year man like i said music was not in part of my life because there was no car there was no no radio for me to listen to music with Mostly my the uh beginning of 04 was just cartoons like SpongeBob, Fairly Odd Parents, Jimmy Neutron, Drake and Josh. The Amanda show was no longer playing like that. If it was playing, it was on Sunday. We had uh Keenan and Kel. That wasn't playing anymore like that. But um it was wrestling games, Spider-Man. Um, oh, yeah, my mom got me for my birthday. Forgot my ninth birthday. <laughs> she got me this game called Masters Blasters. It was a game for PlayStation 1, but I was able to play it on PlayStation 2. And I remember she got me a Jimmy Neutron birthday card, too. And what else? Looking back... um. Yeah, that was um some of the games I got of that year, 04, Spider-Man, the first game, Spider-Man 1. I got um Grand Theft Auto, Vice City. Then I got um Smackdown, Shut Your Mouth. That was later on that year. Madden 05 and that's all I could think of right now but the Nintendo was dying off um, computer games were dying off we weren't playing them anymore we were now it was really about Playstation 2 and I use the computer sometimes but it was mostly for um it was mostly, if I did, my dad gave me an AOLkids.com account. I used that for um, talking with kids my age on AOL.com. That was basically um, that half of the year. And, you know, it was the same shit. Um, oh, yeah. We loved The Simpsons. Whenever we would come home, because we always came home at 6 o'clock, we would always watch The Simpsons at 6 o'clock on Fox 29. That was also a favorite show because we were beginning to watch like more adult cartoons. So The Simpsons and King of the Hill a little bit. We really couldn't get into King of the Hill. But um, as the year was slowly like coming to an end, my um my brother was accepted into this gifted program called PFL Project Forward Leap where he was going to spend five weeks at a camp and he was going to um, be away from home. So I had the whole room to myself for, for like a whole, almost a, almost um, for like a, a month and some change. I had my own room by myself. He wasn't around. I went to summer camp for the second year with just, um, was just um you know I was by myself this time and when I went back to summer camp this girl had a crush on me named Jessica she really liked me and it's not that I didn't like girls it's just that I didn't um I liked certain girls but I knew they wouldn't give me the time of day cuz there was this um there were like two girls that I knew I liked 
but I knew they wouldn't like me. Like I said, it was I was more of a features guy than anything. But my brother was at camp and I remember like like it was yesterday. So we we dropped him off at what would be eventually my future high school. Like the very street that my future high school was on, that's where we dropped him off. We dropped him off near Filbert Street. Filbert Street is very um popular for like bus for buses departing. Like that's a place in Philly where buses are. But we dropped him off there. He went to Project Four Relief. He went to um I know it was Dr. Umar Johnson's um college. Cause there was two colleges that he went to. Millersville, Bryn Mawr. He was there three times. Millersville University, Bryn Mawr, and um, it's one more. Bryn Mawr, Millersville, and I, I forgot the other one. Maybe Dr. Umar went to Millersville, yeah. Millersville was the first one. It was a college dorm that he was staying at for the camp. And he had a he had an Asian roommate. And understand, this is when I'm beginning to be around Asian people because I was never around Asian people prior to me moving in that nasty ass apartment. So not that it was nasty, it just smelled like fish. So um his his roommate's food smelled just like my apartment building. And um I didn't have no prejudice or anything against Asian people at the time. I didn't have none. It's just that I, I just felt like their fucking food just smelled horrible. But they weren't like, I didn't hate them as people. My mouth's getting a little dry. I'm going to resume this um, another time.